Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I now have the distinct honor and privilege to invite Honorable Dato Sri Idris Chuso, Minister of Higher Education Malaysia, to deliver his opening speech. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa bihi nasta'in. Dr. Muhammad Azra Qasim, Chairman of International Education Scientific and Cultural Organization. Big hands to Dr. Muhammad Azra. You make him feel good. He feels good, he work better. Of course, uh, His Excellency Dr. Anwar Al Agha, Ambassador of State of Palestine. Also, big hands to uh, Dr. Anwar. Honorable Professor Datuk Sri Dr. Zaliha Kamaruddin, Rector of International Islamic University of Malaysia. No, you're clapping without asking me, uh, me asking you to do it. So you must be feeling good. If you're feeling good, you must be contributing a lot after this, inshallah. Of course, representative of embassies, education institutions, conference partners, honorable guests, distinguished speakers, and all of you. I've been doing a lot of speeches, so I thought, I make it a little bit different so that you don't sleep during my speech. Or because you don't play with your phones. I'm, uh, of course, I'm delighted. I'm humble to be uh, invited to this conference of ESCO, International Education Scientific Cultural Organization, big names. I'm encouraged to see what ESCO is doing in the field of education, in the field of scientific research, and uh, of course would translate to the culture of Muslims throughout the world. We talk about accessibility to education, not only to education, we talk about quality education that we need in the Islamic world. So in Arabic, we call Ahlan wa Sahlan. Sorry, I forgot that. It's on the screen. To welcome all of you from the Arabic world, from the Malay world, Selamat Datang. If you don't understand, because Selamat Datang, it looks a bit more English. Education has always been my passion. Because, uh, as being said, Basra is a game changer. It would change the whole world through education, of course, the first idea. I mean, if you look at education, Allah said, Kul hal It make a difference whether when you are educated or when you are not educated. And it says to change, Inna Allah hala yuruma bi kumin hatta yuruma bi angusi. I don't have to tell you all this. I'm just reminding what we have been saying what we have not been doing. And of course, again, the word Ikra, the first ayat reminds you, and those Islamic grammatic scholars know that it is fa'il amar, it's an instruction from Allah. It's an obligation that we have to be good in education. What was this? I said, of course, this always been my reference point. Why not we create the Kardoba that was there before? Why not? Look upon us when the love letters were by scholars were written in Arabic. If you are no good, if you can write Arabic scriptures that particular time, you are not a good lover. If you couldn't write, you no know, good a scholar cannot be a good lover if he cannot write letters in 
Arabic. And everybody wants to be like Arabs that particular time. Throughout Europe, they want to be more the Arabs. They want to be like the Arabs. With the good times of Andalusia. I don't need my pictures there, okay? All right. <laughs> they have to wake up and see me. Okay, you need to see the... And of course, these are the intellectual giants that we have at a particular time, much better than the so-called Nobel laureates they have in the world nowadays. Nobel laureate is only good in chemistry. It's only good in economics. Golly good in sociology. But our scholars at a particular time were good in all the areas. You name it, chemistry, you name it, agriculture, you name it, sharia, you name it. And they were half at that particular time. And this can be done, I said. That's what ESCO is all about. ESCO is to put us together, for us to collaborate, for us to do research together, for us to make sure that it becomes a culture of the Muslim throughout the world be it privileged or underprivileged. I'm saying this because I want to see a flying car. You see a car there? It's a car. A flying car. To be the product of ESCO, inshallah. Why not? Big hands to the people of ESCO up down here, you, you guys. Turn it into a reality. I will support you 100%. You can fly anywhere you want. Palestine, uh, Turkey, Syria, Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya, Maldives, Yemen, who else? Indonesia, everywhere, everywhere in the world. A flying car. I cannot say about autonomous car because autonomous car has been invented. I cannot say about electric car because electric car has been invented. Why can't we come up with the flying car? The so-called. This is a product of education and research. I know we have good research. Not only in Malaysia, in Turkey, in even Palestine, those you are all over the world. The Palestinians are throughout the world. You are in America, you are in Europe, you are all over the place. And many also in Malaysia. Doing good in Malaysia. Big hands to Palestine people. Put ourselves together. Nobody can stop us from achieving the big things we want to see happening. Perhaps one thing that is missing nowadays, my passion now is also on Wakaf. High time. I was in Sarajevo a few months back, mashallah. Uh, the building constructed 400 years ago is still intact. The madrasa is still there. What mosque is still there? The madrasa is still there. The caravan's rice is still there. The shops are still there. The best ever economic structure that we have, which the Muslim countries are neglecting. They would solve the issue of poverty. They would solve the issue of redistribution of wealth. If you look at in the world, saying a little bit about economy, you don't see standing organization more than 100 years old. They crumble. You may have a good father. The son may not be as good. Once he gets to the grand, grandson, the whole system is broken. But you look at Wakaf, it's there forever. I'm offering Putrajaya for be the next Wakaf city probably to the Muslim world. Why not? A lot of things we can do together through collaboration. And this is what, as Minister of Higher Education from Malaysia, this is what we can offer. In a nutshell, if you look at our, these are the ranking of Malaysian higher education done by University of Melbourne, not done by us. You can see over the period of last five to six years, we have been improving in our higher education ranking in the world from position of 36 in the world to position of 25. 11 ranking. Perhaps you have it in a book. Are we distributing the book? Are we, we call it Umar? Who's Umar here? 
whose name is Umar here? Yeah, Umar, you are today. Because I talk, I will talk about you today. This is you, U21 ranking. Next one is our university. University of Malaya has been improving from the ranking of 167 to the position of 114. And inshallah, one or two years down the line, UC of Malaya is going to top 100 in the world. <laughs> Umar, this is your aim, Umar. U is U21 ranking for the country. M is for UC Malaya. You are blessed today. Where are you from, Omar? Istanbul. Okay, Turkish. You are Turkish. Okay. I'm going there next month. A, ASEAN universities. Eight as best ASEAN universities. Five are from Malaysia. We occupy the position number three, number four, number five, number seven, and number eight in ASEAN countries. Our research universities, we do have five research universities. We have University of Science Malaysia, University of Malaya, University of Kebangsaan Malaysia, UPM Putra Malaysia and Technology Malaysia where Azrai comes from. And our research universities are top 1% in the world. They are, top, well, they are the top 200 out of 26,000 universities in the world. We are in the top 1% in the world. No clap this time. <laughs> Once you clap, this is... Uh, because this is education forum. You say, by standing there, not many people will listen to you because once you communicate, you want people to listen to you. By walking around, by giving you slides, more people will listen to you. If you clap, you get more because it will energize your brain. That's why it's good for you to clap. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to repeat Umar. U21 ranking. We're number 25 in the world. Continuous improvement. UM, M is UC Malaya. Has been improving for the last few years. Breaking the 100 barrier, perhaps this year or next year. Best ASEAN universities, five out of eight are in Malaysia. And our research universities are top 1% in the world. Not forgetting the 11 subjects, we are top 50 in the world. UC Malaya Engineering faculty is number 10 in the world, according to US News. Never before they categorized. U.S. News has never put Malaysia in the top global universities, but recently, U.S. News has placed not only Malaysian universities has ranked University of Malaya Engineering Faculty as number 10 in the world. Our research publication has grown by 7.2%. Second in the world, comparing to the average of 1.1%, which is the world average. And these are the top. Top scientists, recognized by Clairvian Analytics, they are, most of them I think are Muslims. We have good scientists here. And uh, this guy who built, he's one of the senior engineer doing the construction of the clock tower. Of course, he worked with the government, with a German company. I was not sure when he claimed that he was the supervising engineer until he told me a story. There was a big bang during the construction of the Mecca Tower. And everybody has to live. Being a supervising engineer, he was the only one who has to go up and check what was really happening. Then I really salute him, saying that he is the, one of the senior supervising engineer for the construction of the clock tower. He's a Malaysian. We have redesigned our higher education because 
Education is changing all the time. And uh, this is what we have resigned, our education. Everybody's talking about instant Kamil. Everybody's talking about holistic personalities. Who's doing it throughout the world? Nobody's doing it. We do it because we believe that students have to be evaluated not only on the academic performance. Number one in the world, for the first time, you see ethics and values being considered in the integrated CGPA. Your communication skill, your, phys your social skills, your entrepreneurship being taken into consideration. And Malaysia is the first country. The World Bank keep on saying good things about us because the World Bank want the world to emulate how we evaluate students to become more integrated or more holistic. To you, to I. People are complaining that students are not getting enough ex job experience. In Malaysia, we come up with two you, two I. Two years in universities and two years in the industry so that there is work, study balance between, between the two. We introduce this to the world. And the next one is CEO faculty program. We have CEOs. We have Said Zanal here, the president of ESCO, also one of our top CEOs, <laughs> who go to universities and teach. The CEOs are teaching in universities nowadays. They're supposed to be doing 30 hours of teaching a year, besides looking at the curriculum and training the lecturers and the students in the field that they are doing. This are the things. I don't want to say much more. I want to say these three things only, as I said, and also research. I was telling you now, why can't we have our flying car from ESCO? The first product of research from ESCO is going to be flying car, inshallah. Inshallah. Stand up. Stand up. Face the audience. I said, if others can do it, there's no reason that we cannot do it. Not only there's no reason we cannot do it, there's no reason that we cannot do better that we can do here among the Muslim countries. There's no reason why. We have done it before during Andalusian time. Again, as a proof to the pudding, ICGP is never in the world. It's here. If you talk with Insan Kamil, holistic students, is here. We do it before Oxford, before Cambridge, before Harvard. Experiential learning, we do it here to you to I. You don't get it in Stanford. You don't get it elsewhere, but we have it here. We talk about CEOs going to universities, not only giving lectures, of course. We have CEOs giving lectures in universities for two hours and they go back. It's never nowhere to be seen after that. But in Malaysia, they go to universities, they give lectures, they look at the curriculum, they work with lecturers. They go crazier than that. Tony Fernandez, A Asia, painted the whole plane with the name of the university for no reason without us paying him because he likes to lecture. Some CEOs like to lecture. Things are happening in Malaysia. We work together, I said, strong collaboration among us. There's a lot of things that we can do together. Some of you don't like Malaysian universities. You like international universities. Because some, some of us don't believe in our universities. Of course, okay. We still have it in Malaysia. We have 170,000 students, foreign students in Malaysia at the moment. We have, if you look at Asia School of Business, it's a collaboration with Sloan Business School of MIT with our Federal Reserve Bank. We have here what? Swinburne. We have Nottingham, Reading, Newcastle, Monash. These are the new seats, the foreign new seats we have in Malaysia with the branch campus here. And we're moving forward. As I said, this year, my take, my mandate for Malaysian education is the IR 4.0 how we harness together the so-called knowledge, identity, and humanity as one. 
I put here, if you look properly, the so-called the love quotient, which is our Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim in our education system, where we should not just look for jobs or being selfish about ourselves. That's where the love and care has to come in. It's what being doing by you all here. Thank you very much for coming here. Looking ahead at the new education opportunities in the world, this is what learning is all about. It's no more about teaching. Everybody talks about teaching. Nobody cares about learning. No, it's not student-centered. Learning is about student-centered. We have to talk about hutagogy. We have to talk about pedagogy. We have to talk about cybergogy. What is it? Now the minister is going to try to confuse you. We talk about shutagogy, which is self-directed learning. Because knowledge is everywhere nowadays. Students can learn on your own. You don't need the boring lecturers to tell you what to do. We talk about pedagogy, how you learn from your peers. We talk about cybergogy, how you should learn from online. Because knowledge is in the cloud. We talk about how classroom setup should be. Alhamdulillah, OPSI is moving forward with so called future classroom. Thank you, UPSI. The Deputy Vice Chancellor is here. Okay, sorry. Sunny is also from a board director of UPSI, the youngest director of the university. Thank you very much for accepting the offer to be in the university. Of course, we have to talk about latest technology. You talk about what is now in the fourth industrial revolution. Again, thank you to the donors. Al-Yadu Ulia, Khairu Midan Yadu Sufla. The more you give, the better for you, the better for all of us. Am I right to say that? And this is this is great, actually. We talk about Muslim solidarity here. We talk how we should work together. The beauty of working together. This is a very good example of how things are happening. And as we know, Al Mu'minu Qawyad Ahaba illallah min al Mu'na Daif. We need to be strong. And we can be strong through collaboration, all of us. Before that, before I forget, let's work together. For the donors who are here, for the professors who are here, if collaborate, it's nothing is gonna, it's gonna stop the one billion Muslim to become strong again, to reestablish the so-called Andalusia that we have had before. With the words of Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I now officially declare open this conference. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.